Red Hawks put together their best effort of the year in a 24-14 win over Akron Tuesday night. This Wednesday night, they entertain the Eastern Michigan Eagles. And head coach Chuck Martin joins me to talk about both next here on Red Hawk Football Weekly. This is Red Hawk Football Weekly. Brought to you by G&J Pepsi-Cola of Hamilton. Refreshing southwestern Ohio since 1939. By Koenig Equipment. Found online at KoenigEquipment.com. By Marathon. Fueling the American spirit. By Bud Light. Reminding you to enjoy responsibly among friends. Steve Baker talked with Miami head football coach Chuck Martin after this on Red Hawk Football Weekly. It's true, fans are craving Dr. Pepper more than ever. So I've assembled a team. They're not exactly five stars, but they've got spirit. We'll be at tailgate, the cheap seats, love seats. If you're craving Dr. Pepper, we'll be there. We'll be everywhere. That's me up there. And yes, we are taking walk-ons. I'm in. Doug Flutie? Flutie's in! Let's go, Dr. Pepper Hip! Here's a boys medium. That'll work. Ever wonder what's in a beer? If it's a Bud Light, it's four essential ingredients. Barley, rice, water, and hops. Here's to the beer you can always count on. Brewed to be America's favorite light lager. Hello again, everyone, and welcome into Red Hawk Football Weekly. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. Miami with a big victory on Tuesday night over a co-leader at the time. Akron 24-14 was the final score. Joining us once again is the head coach of the Miami Red Hawks, Chuck Martin. And coach, really, uh, we talked the other night, a, a complete game for this team and a great victory. Yeah, it's, it was it was our most complete effort of the year by far. Really, really solid on special teams. Uh, Kobe Burson and Brody had had big plays on special teams, creating field position. Uh, Jalen Bester, big return. Offense uh, really moved the ball the whole game. Ran the ball for over five yards carry, threw the ball for three touchdowns. Uh, really took control in the third quarter with back-to-back -to -back touchdowns to stretch our lead to 17. Uh, besides a couple turnovers, really, really played a solid game on offense. Defense, obviously our best effort in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, flying around, tackles for lost sacks, pass breakups, great coverage. Uh, they, we held them to two point something yards per carry for the for the game, and when you do that, you're going to win a lot of football games. Yeah, you hold them to 55 yards rushing in, in the game, and I want to talk a little bit about the defense simply because uh, you were throwing a curveball with Cato Nelson as the starting quarterback as uh, Woodson was suspended for the game, and I know you made some last minute adjustments, but uh, it, even if you make them, you know, the night before, it's tough to get those in and have them work like they did. Yeah, and we were ready for Cato Nelson because he had played some mm -hmm. in, in, in games, went games on the line because he was kind of like their Wildcat quarterback. So you bring him in and run some Wildcat runs, but we had a couple calls. We didn't have 70 plays worth of calls for Cato <laughs> Nelson. So we at least, we, we met on the day of the game defensively to try to create uh, some, some more Cato Nelson package because it was going to be a completely different offense with him mm -hmm. out there. And we actually put a call in six minutes before the game started that we ran on play three of the game and got a tackle for loss. So kids and coaches did a great job making last minute adjustments and, and adapting to a, to a different situation. There are a lot of highlights in Tuesday night's game. Let's take a look at those from the first half and we'll start with the defense as uh, right off the get go Miami's defense gets to Cato. Yep, and that's the call we put in with six minutes to go uh, on the clock before the game started. We put in a little <laughs> stunt with Junior in the D-line, and Junior gets off a block and makes a great play. Second and ten here, and Nelson gets three yards on the run, but no more. And again, great pursuit by your defense. Yeah. Nelson, we chased him down. A lot of red jerseys all over the football night. There was very few solo tackles. They do get in field goal range, but Gasser misses wide right, and you keep them off the board in the opening uh, segment and then Miami gets the ball on downs and you move right down the field on the first couple of plays Ryan Smith on the seam yeah we move the ball every time we touch it almost mm -hmm. the whole game uh, great great play action off our, our east and west run game off our jet game fake the inside zone hit Smitty in the seam great catch Smitty as usual takes a blow falls forward good pay patience there waiting for him to open up here's Kenny Young had a great night as well straight up the gut for uh, a big game yeah great seam up inside 
Uh, good job by the, the old line, as you see, creates a nice window for Kenny to explode through, and he does that so well for us. Here you get into Akron territory, but the first mistake for Gus Raglan in this game. Yeah, and again, it's it's twofold. One, we throw the pick. It's, it's a good read, just a bad throw by Gus. Uh, and then they return at 41 yards and create up really their only touchdown to the fourth quarter was created. Great hustle by Murphy on this play, hawking him down. And this is the touchdown. Uh, 35 yards is a short way to go, and Cato Nelson takes it in from seven yards out, and it's 7 nothing Akron. But the Miami offense, uh, again, who had just moved the ball well, responds quickly. Here's Kenny Young for 10 yards. Again, great job up front. Great job by Jalen Besser on the yeah. per perimeter, picking up an ad lib block, and then Kenny using his speed to bounce the outside. But really good job inside again. Space outside there, you see Jalen right there deliver a blow at about 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, Jalen's Jalen's pretty strong kid for how small he is. Gus Raglan, uh, his first game back and doing what Gus does. Nothing open up. He's going to take off and run for 19. Yeah, really good, really good decision making. Uh, went through all his options. Uh, nothing there. Uh, tucks it down. Gets us a first down. You see the run and slide there. And on uh, third and five here, Gus finds Sam Martin. And yeah. great. Uh, actually, this is over the middle, excuse me, yeah. uh, to Sam Martin. That's for, Jared, Jared Murphy. Jared actually. Murphy there. Murphy, I'm Murphy sorry. Makes for a great 19. catch. Good throw. Uh, Murph goes up and extends and gets it and, and takes a hit and comes down with a great play by Murph. And then third and five from the 19, here's the catch by Sam Martin. Yeah, really good route, got open, Gus throws a perfect ball, Sam makes a nice finish, but really good throw and catch, really good route, Sam holds on to the football there, touchdown, and again, against one of the top red zone defenses in the country. Uh, we make a big play and, and, and tie the game up. 7-7 seven, seven as the Akron offense takes over and the defense again takes over. Getting to Cato Nelson, this is a sack. And, uh, just great work by Akeem Allen to flush him and then Tony Reed gets him. Yeah, not many high, times your high hole player gets a sack, but uh, Tony's kind of all over the field. We talk about closing space and pursuit and crazy great pursuit on that play for our defense. Later in the second period, uh, first and 10 from the 50, and again, this time Doug Costin gets him. Yeah, Doug Costin gets home in a hurry. Great coverage. Took away his first throw. He wanted to throw the ball one-on-one. -on -one. We took away the first throw, and Doug got home in a hurry. This is fourth and two. They go for it, and again, uh, throws an incomplete pass, but it's batted by Akeem Allen, and just got enough of it for the incomplete. Great job getting our hands off. Pass breakups are hard to come by. We don't care if they're DBs or D-line. Fourth and two. Great job by Akeem with his mere hand, getting his hand up, getting us off the field, and setting the offense up with good field position. Again, Red Hawks take over on downs, and second and nine, Kenny Young gets his longest run of the night, 17 yards. Yeah, great job by our offense. There's a minute to go. We get the 42. We drive down and get points on this drive. Great job. Huge opening up the middle, and then again, Kenny Kenny does what Kenny does when we get him in the mm -hmm. secondary. Third and 10 here, and again, Gus Raglan will tuck and run. A little bit of controversy after this play. It was originally spotted at the nine-yard line for a first down. After video review, they send it back to the 11-yard line, and that means Sam Sloman has to come in to end the half. Yeah, it took away a chance for us to get a touchdown, but it's still a great drive by our offense, great job by X-Point field goal units. Sam comes in, and they got that fourth and two. Akeem gets his hand up and bats it down. It creates a situation for our offense to go down and get us a lead at halftime. That's three straight games, by the way, that in that last two minutes the Red Hawks have scored really great use of the two minute offense yeah no we, we were getting some confidence and, and we're making plays and it's key how you finish those halves Red Hawks lead at the half 10-7 as they go to the break we'll review the second half of action from Jaeger Stadium on Tuesday night in just a moment still to come we'll talk about Eastern Michigan they'll be in town on Wednesday night when we return we'll be back in a moment on Red Hawks Football Weekly you train it twinges you twist it tears for every way you move and every way it hurts, the orthopedics and sports medicine team at Mercy Health provides comprehensive expert care for bones, muscles, tendons, and joints. With more than 60 physicians and specialists and more therapists, athletic trainers, and conveniently located sports medicine facilities than any other system in greater Cincinnati, Mercy Health helps you stay in motion. Call 844-9-GO-PLAY for same day or next business day appointments. The new celebration rules are in place and Pepsi is all for it. So what's big man Joe Staley doing? He's celebrating a touchdown he didn't score. The sad truth is the odds of a guy like Joe scoring a real touchdown are the same as zero. But it's fun to dream, isn't it? Even if those dreams are delusional. Hey, there's no I in impossible, Joe. There is, there's two. Shh. 
This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly is brought to you by Courtyard Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. Hello again and welcome back to Red Hawk Football Weekly. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, recapping the 24-14 win over Akron Tuesday night at Yeager Stadium. And at the half, Miami is leading 10-7 as head coach Chuck Martin rejoins us. And you talk about leading at the half and, and having that momentum going in. Obviously, you're, you, everybody had played well to that point. You had to feel really good about what was going on in the football yeah, field. Yeah, and that's kind of been the nature of the season for us. Yeah, we, we exactly. Have not, we have half. not come out and not played well at all in any game. We've, we've played very well. Well, we've been prepared. We've come out and played well. Now, can we continue the good play in the third quarter through the fourth quarter? Can you finish the game? Yeah, and, and again, uh, the defense, and one of the things about this game, uh, Heath Harding said it in the press conference on uh, Thursday that, you know, the defense – didn't do anything differently other than what they were supposed to do. There was nothing special in there, and we've talked about it before. Each of the guys was 111th. Yeah, and we talked a, a week ago, a lot of our troubles a week ago against OU were guys trying to do too much. Yeah. Guys trying to do somebody else's job, and like Heath mentioned, everybody just stayed. If, if you're supposed to be in coverage, you're in coverage. You're supposed to be rushing the quarterback, you're rushing the quarterback. No one's guessing and trying to hope and pray and make play. Everybody's trusting each other. And, and on, on the offense, obviously, Gus throws the two picks, but it is literally uh, a, a different offense when he's out there yeah no and again we're very accustomed to the style we play he's mm -hmm. our starter we practice all off season with Gus in there and everybody's used to the the stuff we can do with him in there so everybody's more comfortable he's in there just because the style of play we use with Gus in there and all our runs and all our RPOs and all our play actions off it are are things that the whole awesome's accustomed to and then obviously Gus gives everybody confidence and uh, threw the ball well ran the ball well uh, but it would be the defense that would really dominate in the third quarter as uh, Akron won the initial toss and elected to defer so they get the football uh, to begin the second half and the Red Hawk defense absolutely shuts down the Akron offense in that third quarter as we take a look at the highlights again from Tuesday night and the second quarter will begin here with a rush up the middle by Manny Morgan and he is stacked up only after a two yard gain. Yeah really good fits everybody's in their gaps uh we always talk about building a wall defensively. When he, everybody gets in a gap, we build a wall. There's no place to run. Whichever gap he decides, you got to make the play within your gap. They would wind up punting on this first possession. On the next possession, more of the same as Cato Nelson gets caught. Yeah, RPO. Darius Thompson takes away his read. He wants to throw the quick slant. The quick slant's not open. He's got to pull it down. We get a sack, and that's how coverage affects your pass rush. Right there, you see he's ready to throw the ball. He can't throw it, and Akeem and Doug Costin uh, all over him. Three uh, Red Hawks around uh, the quarterback there. Miami on their second possession goes to work. And really, this was Kenny Young's drive here for eight yards this time around the left side. Yeah, great run. Good perimeter block blocking. Sam Martin, who actually loses his first block right here, picks up a second block in Springs. Kenny makes Sam's guys miss, and Sam stays with play. Really nice job. Yeah, Brian Bell lost his shoes out there, I think. Here you find Kenny out of the backfield on the wheel. Yeah, another play action off our, off our run game, and it's been so effective for us. Uh, and we do so many things with our jet jet game and there's another play and well designed and they flip it out wide open to Kenny and Kenny gets us some nice yards after the catch. Really gets him out in the seam and in space to pick up 23 yards and a second and 10 from the Akron 30 and uh, Gus under pressure is able to find Kenny. Yeah, really good job. Boot throwback. Uh, makes a good enough throw. Kenny makes a really nice adjustment, makes a catch and gets the ball in the end zone. Great job by, as you said, Kenny Young coming back for the football. And again, you will see it on the replay as the Red Hawks uh, at that point take a 17-7 lead over the Akron Zips. And again, coming back for the football and then uh, literally running through the tackle to get yep. into the end zone. Huge play to extend the lead to 17-7. Now we got a two-score lead. And the Red Hawks uh, defense continues to work well. This is Brad Koenig over the middle. Great defense, not, not a P.I., just reaches around, bats the ball away. Yeah, great coverage on this play. You saw the our copy of it. You got five guys in man coverage, and there's nowhere. Every receiver looked just like that one. Third and seven here, and again, uh, Cato Nelson saw a lot of the field turf at Jaeger. He'll see it again here. Yeah, great blitz by Koenig. Uh, flushes a quarterback. He bounced off some guys. Quinn Calcagno had a really, really nice game for us. Cleans it up for us. But Koenig blows up the back, creates the initial pressure. And then there's Doug. He makes Doug miss. He bounces off Koenig. That's kind of the story of the night. Uh, third guy in got the sack. So we, we did a great job of pursuing a really, really athletic quarterback. Up until this point, 344 to go in the third quarter. They had done a great job on James Gardner. But his first catch is a signature James Gardner catch. Yeah, yeah really good throw and catch. 
Uh, Gus getting the ball up and where James can go get it. Uh, big play, big chunk play to move the ball down the field. And he got both feet inbounds here and uh, gets the grab uh, for a big gain for the Miami Redhawks. 20-yard pickup, and then a few plays later, Gus finds him again in the yeah, end zone. Great move off the line. James got pretty much clear, and Gus yeah. puts it on him. Awesome job. Great route by James, you see right here. Guy's been playing him outside the whole game. James beats him up inside. Explosive, makes a big play. Awesome job. 24-7 is the score here. Akron would score a touchdown on their next drive as you take the look at the catch by James Gardner one again, once again and made it 24-14. Just over 13 minutes to go. From that point, Miami's ground game would grind off time off the clock and the Red Hawk defense continued to do what they had done all game long. Yeah, harass the quarterback. Great coverage. Give us time. But you see, again, Quinn's first doesn't get home. Akeem's second doesn't get home. Junior's third. And we finally wrestle the ground with Doug and now Quinn's help again. So the story of the night is pursuing that quarterback, getting a great rush and pursuing that quarterback. And this will be the final sack of the game. First and 10 from the 37 and Doug Costin. Yeah, Doug Costin, great job winning on the, beating their left tackle. Some help from Junior pushing up inside. Uh, great, great job by the guys up front. Great job by the guys in the back end all night. Very difficult guy to play. Uh, and we did a great job harassing him the whole evening. Absolutely, and and you had mentioned great job by the line, and this was the first game in a while I can remember really getting a push up front and really putting pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, pretty much every week we've talked about our yeah. lack of pass rush. Right, <laughs> right. It's been, it's been a problem. The third downs mm -hmm. have been a problem, no pass rush. And now, you know, and, and we rushed five some, but we, we got home with four a ton, and Akeem and Trawick and Costin and, and Quinn Calcagno uh, really did a tremendous job of being relentless the whole evening every snap and really harassing him and not giving him much time to throw the football and a little wrinkle you, you brought junior up and you brought brad up caning up some yeah and we, we we always bring our mike and our will some but we brought it probably with a little more frequency uh, just because we felt like as athletic as he was we wanted a fifth rusher it's really it wasn't really the plan with woodson more the drop back guy but when you have an athletic quarterback you just felt like a fifth guy in there would be <laughs> would be beneficial uh -huh. just just to be chasing him around and it, and it worked out well for us 24 14 was the final. Miami gets the victory and with that victory keeps their bowl eligibility hopes alive. Eastern Michigan is next up. It'll be a 7 o'clock kick at Jaeger Stadium on Wednesday night. It'll be on CBS Sports Network and uh, we'll of course have it on the Miami IMG Sports Network and the TuneIn app as well. We'll preview that game and talk about the seniors playing their last home game this Wednesday night when we return with more Red Hawk Football Weekly in just one moment. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly has been brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. are craving Dr. Pepper more than ever. So I've assembled a team. They're not exactly five stars, but they've got spirit. We'll be at tailgate. The cheap seats, love seats. If you're craving Dr. Pepper, we'll be there. We'll be everywhere. That's me up there. And yes, we are taking walk-ons. I'm in. Doug Flutie? Flutie's in! Let's go, Dr. Pepper, help. Here's a boys medium. That'll work. Keep twisting, keep stretching, keep bending and chasing. For total and partial joint replacement to rehabilitation, the orthopedics and sports medicine team at Mercy Health provides comprehensive expert care for bones, muscles, tendons, and joints. With more than 60 physicians and specialists, more therapists and conveniently located facilities than any other system in greater Cincinnati, Mercy Health helps you stay in motion. Find your specialist at mercymovesyou.com. 
And we are back, our final segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly. I'm Steve Baker, and along with head coach Chuck Martin, the Red Hawks will entertain Eastern Michigan on Wednesday night at Yeager Stadium at 7 o'clock. We'll uh, preview that game momentarily. But first, Coach, I want to talk about the seniors uh, that are playing their final home game here on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, a lot has changed for them within the program over those four or five years. Yeah, not a, not a large group. Yeah. <laughs> Not a large group. We were counting them up. I think there's what six, eight, something, eight, eight, I think, eight, eight yeah. total kids that were uh, obviously offensively with with Nemec and, and Jordan Diamond and Murphy and Sam Martin and, and Ryan Smith, and then defensively it's Tony, it's Akeem, and it's Heath. Yeah. So we're not losing not losing a bunch of kids. But uh, yeah, when they got here, it was it was we couldn't compete with anyone. Mm -hmm. We couldn't we couldn't beat the second worst team in the league. You know. I think we lost to Kent State 27-9 to mm -hmm. the year before I got here, and we played any good team in the league. And now now we know we can play with anyone in the MAC. We've, we've improved our facilities from the worst facilities in Division I football to uh, the best facilities in our league by far, and there'll mm -hmm. be great facilities for years to come. And we're a very competitive, talented football team, and we're still still young. We got, yeah. we got next year will be our first year where we're going to be talking about 20-some seniors, and right. you have your first go-round of a normal senior class. So very proud of those kids, what they've been through, and how they've helped build this program up to where we're a very, very competitive MAC team and we can play with anybody in this league. And you're talking about the next class, and that is something new this year. We usually do the NLI show in February. That's moved up. Uh, you get an early signing period on December 20th, and uh, that's right around the corner. Yeah, no, it's right around the corner. I mean, it, we're all getting used to that. Uh, <laughs> but it's exciting. It's a smaller class because we don't have many seniors, mm -hmm. uh, but um, it, it'll be, it's it's as talented a class we've ever had. The new facilities make a huge difference. This is really the first class yeah. that was recruited with the new f new APC, APC yeah. and uh, also coming off a conference championship a year ago. So right. a different different level of recruit. So uh, we've built this thing. We've got a lot better, but there's there's a couple more rungs to go. And as we continue to improve and continue uh, to recruit to the new facilities, we're going to get better and better players in here. And again, look forward to that on December 20th. We'll have uh, the announcement of the NLIs and do our NLI show then. Uh, let's talk about the Eagles. Eastern Michigan comes in here three and seven. This team could easily be I don't know, eight and two at this point of the season? Yeah, they, you know, they've got seven losses we talked about earlier. You know, double overtime loss to OU. Everybody knows how good a football team the MAC OU has this mm -hmm. year. Five point loss to Toledo. Overtime loss to Northern Illinois. Overtime loss to, to Western Michigan. Lost by a touchdown last night and they turned the ball over five times. Lost to Army by one, lost to Kentucky by four. So they're, they're, they're not unlike us. They had a really kind of come out of come out of nowhere year last year, mm -hmm. much like Miami did, and really jump on the scene and become a really good MAC team. And then they've done everything. They played really good football. They just had one game, much like us this year. So they're, they're kind of looking at the year just like we are, what, what could have been, but uh, they're a very talented football team. Brogan, uh, Brogan Roback is the quarterback and uh, loves to get outside the pocket. Doesn't run it a whole lot, but boy, he can throw it from anywhere. Yeah, no, great, great in the pocket. Strong, he's got strong as arms. Anybody in the country, an NFL prospect, but also really good at ad living. You flush him, and he can run, but he when he gets flush, he's looking to make big plays down the field and does such a great job of finding receivers. The receivers do such a great job of moving uh, when when Roback gets out of the pocket. So they and they've got one of the stingiest defenses in our league. And again, again bowl eligibility on the line, final game home game at Yeager Stadium there's there's a lot to play for for the entire team this week. yeah and we just want to continue what we did last week we, we had the best week of the year seven day week and we're going to try to have another great seven day week this year and get after get after Eastern Michigan when they come here coach best of luck appreciate Thank it you. as always head coach Chuck Martin and Red Hawk Football Weekly again uh, if you uh, just are tuning in it is seven o'clock on Wednesday night that just announced on Thursday it'll be on CBS Sports Network and uh, we'll also have it for you myself Terry Bridge Randy Hollowell will be on the air at six o'clock with the Knowles of Oxford tailgate show on your tune in app and also on the Miami IMG Sports Network that'll do it from Oxford we appreciate you tuning in for another Red Hawk Football Weekly this has been Red Hawk Football Weekly, brought to you by G&J Pepsi-Cola of Hamilton, refreshing southwestern Ohio since 1939, by Koenig Equipment, found online at KoenigEquipment.com, by Marathon, fueling the American spirit, by Bud Light, reminding you to enjoy responsibly among friends.
Red Hawk Football Weekly is an exclusive production of the Miami IMG Sports Network. You train, it twinges. You twist, it tears. For every way you move and every way it hurts, the orthopedics and sports medicine team at Mercy Health provides comprehensive expert care for bones, muscles, tendons, and joints. With more than 60 physicians and specialists and more therapists, athletic trainers, and conveniently located sports medicine facilities than any other system in greater Cincinnati, Mercy Health helps you stay in motion. Call 844-9-GO-PLAY for same day or next business day appointments. Something out there for you. American Road is calling 